Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of First and Last. My name is Josh, and with me today I have Joe. Hey man. And Jimmy. You say his name right, it's Spaghetti Joe. <laughs> no it is not, you are Spaghetti Jimmy. Spaghetti Joseph. Gotta give the fans what they want, if I'm Spaghetti Joe, then I'm Spaghetti Joe. We got, this, <laughs> we got the Pasta Brothers over here. <laughs> Pasta, pasta bros. <laughs> it's just like that. Just sounds like Mario and Luigi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got a five. Was it five stars? Yes. We got a five hey. star review that said our show was fun and that yeah, thanks. You, they said you gotta love Spaghetti Joe, <laughs> which is which is great. So I think the key to thinking this podcast is five stars is not paid that much attention to it. <laughs> yeah, just, no, it's just, it's just background noise, and every now and then they hear see us spaghetti. Dump, dump. Spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what did they hear? Sorry, I gotta control it, delete. Right. I'm trying to read Wikipedia and talk at the same time. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, well, Joe, we're doing a podcast called First and Last, which is what the listeners are listening to. If they're for some reason tuning in for the first time, what is this podcast? Uh, we take a TV show and watch only the first and only the last episode, nothing in between. You might say it's kind of a fun idea, and I don't know how people thought of this before. Well, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't think of this before. How they didn't think of this before. I mean, this is our. I think this is number ninety-one. We're Ooh, we're, we're closing in on episode one hundred. Yeah. Will we be syndicated then? Uh, That's yeah. where you make the real money. <laughs> we're gonna take Roseanne's spot on TV. Oh. Well, that went away. So. That, yeah, they pulled that. <laughs> That's gone. So we'll take it as long as neither one of you tweet out something nasty. <laughs> No promises. I got to go delete my history. <laughs> <laughs> if it's already on the internet, Joe, it's already on the internet. You got to get rid they're of gonna, a lot of stuff. They're going to find it. <laughs> they, a lot of stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you really happy that we didn't grow up when the internet was really a thing? Uh, Are you happy or sad about that? I mean, my Zanga still exists somewhere. Like, you couldn't, like, Google it, but it exists in, like, a Zanga archive somewhere. But we still needed to be hmm. in, like, late high school, early college to deal with that. Sure. Because I think in freshman year is when, like, you had to have a college email to have Facebook. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was it? Mm-hmm. That was, we, we had Facebook when it was exclusive. Yeah. And a 13 year old couldn't just lie about their age and have a Facebook. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that. I do remember when they, like, added the first, like, high school people. And I was, like, questioning whether it was right to, like, add someone i knew who was still in high school to facebook or not because <laughs> you were in college yeah and, and so... i was like i don't know if this is okay <laughs> well if that's if that's the worst when moral thing... standards still existed yeah. in the world it felt like a college thing to me you're like mm, you're too young mm-hmm. <laughs> you child in high school you're bad i mean i guess i guess i don't know it's we don't have any like just random pictures of us f- floating around essentially on the internet of us growing up or doing anything mm-hmm. like kids today do. I don't mm. need none of us did anything bad though. It's not like any of us like kicked a dog or like while set being someone's filmed. house on fire <laughs> or like or just like said a bunch of racist stuff in a grocery store. <laughs> hmm. You know, or was like twelve and was like, oh, I'm gonna tweet the n word because I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's a good point. I see what you're saying, but at the same time, kids are just kids are just dumber, right? But <laughs> getting dumber and dumber. Oh, they're dumber now. Yeah, I think yeah. so. We do have 91 like episodes of podcasts that I'm sure we'd have said dumb stuff on. Oh yeah, for oh, sure. Terrible oh, things. That's on the internet. Very much. But at least I just <laughs> at least I can be an adult about that <laughs> yeah. and learn from my mistakes. If you're if you're new to the podcast, search back and try to find the worst things. Please. Listen to all the things Josh has said. <laughs> yeah. Don't. It's probably the past 91 episodes. <laughs> People, Trust me, it's in there. The, the worst stuff has been said by me on this podcast. <laughs> Just listen for to sure. the first and lasties and Josh's awards for saying the worst things. Awards for being the, <laughs> the realest dude. It's not the award I got. Yeah. Look up the Family Matters episode. It's, uh, <laughs> Wait, what? it's pretty intense. Was there some, was there some racist comments <laughs> yeah. in regards to Carl? <laughs> what did I do? Um... <laughs> Oh, I love, I love Family Matters. I love the Steve Urkel show. <laughs> no, you Steve don't. And the Wilsons. Nobody loves. loves it. I remember you saw the cables at the end. Um, but we're not doing Family Matters today. No. Nope. Yeah. What are we doing today, Joe? Today we're doing a show that has been called. My phone had to turn over. The crudest comedy on primetime television. 
peppered with lewd punchlines about sex, masturbation, the gay lifestyle, and the lead character's fondness for pornographic magazines and strip clubs. The gay lifestyle? The gay lifestyle. Hmm. We already d- we already <laughs> did Entourage. <laughs> we, it's, uh, we already did we already did Blossom. It's uh cool. it's married <laughs> dot 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 with children. Oh, there's yeah. there's an ellipsis in the title, huh? Yeah. yeah. That quote was from the parents television console. Oh well. Yeah. Here's, Makes sense. Here's an idea, parents. Don't let your kids watch the show. <laughs> I think that's why they're mad. That show wasn't for kids. Like there's no I don't no. think anybody making that show was like, you know who's a great audience? Twelve year olds. The children's in the name. Who do you think this show was for? <laughs> um, old people, people married forty dot 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 with children. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like forty year old men that are like, man, I can't wait for my kids to get to go to fucking school and never come back. <laughs> That's who this was for. Hmm. Yeah, I do appreciate that. There's an ellipsis in the title mm-hmm. because I feel like those are now they're not they're just not used. Yeah, but now it's more of a cold. As an ellipsis, mm-hmm. people use dot 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 all the time, but it just means nothing. It just means I haven't finished my thought. Oh yeah, like you know, people just and it's like there'd be like forty dots now. <laughs> like, <laughs> what my, are you doing today? My boss sent me an or not my boss, but um, my boss's boss sent me an email, or it was a meeting invite for a meeting tomorrow, um, and the name of the meeting is options dot dot dot. <laughs> Yikes! Was there any? <laughs> base to that was there any body to that email uh yeah there was some and it's like hey let's talk about some stuff no oh, okay my my i hate it when <laughs> i hate it when people send you like a meeting invite yeah. and they invite like three people and you're one of the three and mm-hmm. they're like going like options dot 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 mm-hmm. and then there's no body text and you're like <laughs> what is this about. meeting for yeah and then you yeah. get there half the time i swear half the time at my work then i get to that meeting mm-hmm. and they're like so what did you what do you think about like this Mm-hmm. And it's like that, that could have been in the body, and I was like, <laughs> "Could you have let me prepared for this?" Yeah, or, I could have looked this up. Seems like we're gonna have a meeting about setting up this meeting right now. When it could have just been <laughs> the prep, the prep work for this meeting. Yeah, but then you get to Yikes. you know, then that means that that gets solved in an email, and they don't get to have a meeting. Oh, and sometimes maybe. people just like to have maybe. a meeting. People do love meetings. <laughs> I love particularly love. When people at work email and the entire subject of the email is just in the subject line, the whole like body <laughs> of what the email's about, and then they've got nothing to write in oh, the body. People do send emails like that. They're like, "Hey, could you have this? <laughs> have this at my desk by like end of day?" Mm-hmm. And then that's the mm-hmm. subject line. Yeah, and there's nothing <laughs> right. in the email. Right. The body just says hilarious. Them, like EOM end of message. Not even. They no. don't even do that. A lot of people I do wish. that. I wish. <laughs> Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. They don't even waste their time with those three other letters. They have to push. <laughs> they have to push down shift. They have to hold it down. And write E O M. Ain't doing mm-hmm. that. So crude TV shows. <laughs> you think this show is really going to be crude, like to us now? Because when was this on? This is like the eighties, isn't it? Yeah, the first 80s. season was nineteen eighty-seven. Okay, for so carried seasons. into well yeah. into well into the nineties. Yeah. Um, I think definitely not by like our standards today but i'm sure it is i'm sure we'd we'd be shocked just like thinking of it as like a network tv show Hmm. yeah i mean i would say with uh i would say no i don't think i'm gonna be like oh man Mm -hmm. i will probably i hope i hope there is one or two things that i go oh man they got away with that like (laughs) i hope i i hope we get some of that but i do see like as far as a lot of like PC culture today. I would say like maybe I probably already think that this show probably wouldn't fly today. Oh you know, yeah, absolutely. At least not for a network because this is on Fox, right? Yeah, but Fo- Fox is, was also that network that would like kind of take anything on. Yeah, like we're the fucking cool network. Yeah, we're not like yeah. we're not like your other networks. We're cool networks. <laughs> yeah. If you're gonna drink, just drink at home or watching Fox. <laughs> That's that yeah. Was Fox. I mean, they did do like. That's true about Fox because they did uh, Simpsons, right? And they did Family Guy, all the big, like pushing envelope stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like Family Guy used to have obvious. I mean, Simpsons was funny and it pushed it like maybe a little bit, but Family yeah. Guy, especially yeah. when it came out, people were mad yeah. about that. They, like canceled it for a while. Yeah, because it was like too offensive. Or, yeah, because de- people definitely liked it. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what they're gonna do in the beginning of this episode for this tv show Mm because it's uh i mean we've seen some of this show have has anyone not seen some of this show before 
I my dad used to love this show. <laughs> So I've definitely, like, I know, like, the characters and, and stuff. And while your dad was watching this show, he was like, please, Jimmy, move to college and never come back. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like the kids in this are, like, too old. I feel like they're, maybe Bud, Bud is the son, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know where that, I've at some point got to do a, where is he now? Because I feel like everyone else has continued on to do lots of stuff. I feel like mm-hmm. Bud probably like flips houses or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's Bud. If he would be so lucky. There's Bud who's the younger brother and then there's is it Kelly who's the that daughter? That sounds right. Christina yeah. Applegate. Yeah. yeah. And then Al and Peggy who are the husband and wife. And Peggy was yeah. uh, Lila. Yeah. yeah. She's Lila. Lila. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which we just did. She's in she's a main character in Sons of Anarchy which we haven't done yet, but Loved that show. But one day, Jimmy will make us watch that I, show. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and yeah. then Al Bundy. What's his name? I don't know. He's like... Name. You don't know him? He's... he. I feel like he was like Al Bundy for a generation of people. And now he's the guy from Modern Family for like another oh, generation yeah, of people. Oh, yeah. He's in that family. That show's been going on for he's like 10 years. <laughs> that show's been on that long, too? Yeah. Because the kids in that show are old now, too. Yeah. 10 years that show's... Yeah. It's, 2009 oh wow i didn't know that yeah and I, it's still on i've mm-hmm. probably seen three episodes of modern family and not like on purpose on. <laughs> it's one Ed of those like it was name. on kind of thing um i've probably seen at least 15 episodes of married with children I, mm. oh okay nice um but so like what are they gonna do because i'm assuming their family is established the kids are older mm-hmm. they're not they're like in high school i think mm-hmm. um what do they get like a new neighbor you know, like, what's the new... Because in general, pilot, enter new thing. Mm-hmm. And that's how the story starts. Yeah. Well, where what do you think their setting is? Do you think they're a pretty, like, standard middle-class family? Yeah. Middle-class, um, just regular house family. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to get this confused sometimes. I know it's not the same show, but that's that one show. I think we talked about this not too long ago. The guy who sits in the downstairs talking to Bobcat Goldthwaite, the, yes. the bunny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what that show was called. I, I'm gonna have to look it up. Well, look it up. But um, I I like know that's not true because Al Bundy sits on the couch upstairs mm-hmm. and watches TV and tries yeah. to ignore his family with his hand in his pants. With his hand in his pants. Mm-hmm. And the other guy that I'm thinking about sits in the basement with the bunny. <laughs> because he's like drunk, right? Is that the dad from Dexter? Is that why we talked about it? Maybe that's the guy know. from Dexter. Um, that was his dad. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they get new neighbors. Okay. I don't think there's a school issue or anything mm-hmm. in this episode. I think uh, new neighbors move in. Al doesn't want to have anything to do with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe Kelly may or may not be having sex. Okay. Like with the neighbor or like... No. No. Just boys in the <laughs> neighborhood. Just boys. Just roaming boys. Okay. I feel like there's got to be some sort of like something joke like that. Hmm. That's what I got. That's my first episode thing. I think they're trying to buy a car and they're trying to decide between Al's trying to like buy something practical and cheap, and cheap, definitely cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and Peggy's trying to get something like super expensive, like a convertible. Yeah. Or a Rolls Royce. Maybe. <laughs> exactly. The Rolls Royces come in convertibles. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe they, they just do. take the top right off of it. What do you think, Jimmy? Uh, <clears throat> I think and if the listeners can hear a purr, it's just, it's <laughs> cat is cat is purring in my lap. <laughs> I think, um, I think this is going to have, oh, what show am I thinking of? I think this is going to have like an, a home improvement feel mm. where, uh-huh. The dad is dumb and chauvinistic in some way, and Katie Seagal is like actually like the smart one. And <laughs> Bud is work through Jonathan it, work Taylor through Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shoot. I feel like also schizophrenic bunnies. What is it? Stuffed animals. 
You just name it. You're trying to name out the other show now. You, yeah, you're going, you're going the wrong way. You're going yeah. the wrong way. Unhappily ever after is what it's I feel like we're meant to like empathize with Al, so like everyone around is is dumb. Hmm. All right. Because he's married with children. Dot, with dot, children dot. and a dog. Do you have a dog? They have, totally have a dog. Buddy. That's the kid's name. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he's named after the dog. Maybe the dog's named after him. I I I like that. Franklin. Franklin the dog. Sounds like a good dog's name. Sounds like a better name. I imagine than Bud. it being like a big brown dog. <laughs> they yeah. named their son Bud. Yeah, it's like a big shaggy shaggy brown dog. Oh, is it? Nice. Yeah. Crushing it. But I was going dark brown. Is it dark brown? I think so. I think it's shades of brown. Okay. Fifty shades of brown. Oh, weird. Um, should that's we? That's the newest. Should we? Should we just get movie. into it and see how crude this show is? Let's do it. Let's see how crude this is. I don't <laughs> believe it. I think it's gonna be totally fine. Um, <laughs> all right, we'll see you after the pilot episode of Married with Children. Yeah. Okay. Here's my one thing. Oh. I think I think <laughs> Al stares into the cleavage of some lady. That's not his wife. All right. We'll find out next. After we come back from the break. And hopefully not his daughter. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back. We're done with the pilot of Married with Children. It was called Pilot. It was as advertised. It was a pilot. Mm -hmm. He was married. He had children. His children were barely in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know nothing about them. Hey, dad. Bye, dad. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it pretty much established that Al Bundy was the main character, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, you got a write-up for us, Jim? Um, yeah, I do. I'm just reading that. Do we do it wrong? There was. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 I, no, no. Um, but there was an identical script to a different pilot that they shot. And the only thing that was different was... They recast Kelly and Bud. Oh, so they had two other kids before? Yeah. Well, good on Christine Applegate. That worked out for her, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, whoever that dude and is. And whoever that Bud kid is. Ed Bud. O'Neill felt the chemistry wasn't right. And so they did a new pilot. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Yep. The Oh, man. The Bundy family, which makes up of chauvinist shoe salesman Al... His lazy housewife, Peggy, their dumb 15-year-old daughter, Kelly, and their bratty 12-year-old con artist son, Bud, have settled into a peaceful coexistence in suburban Chicago, married only by the vicious verbal volleys they exchange to each other while awake. Peggy invites their new neighbors, newlyweds Steve and Marcy Rhodes, over for the evening, so she forbids Al from going out to a basketball game with his single co-worker, Luke, from the show shoe store. Written by Anonymous. No. I was like, are you, I mean, is that a big dramatic pause? <laughs> it's happening. Um, okay. I'll be honest. I was half paying attention to you when you said that. I mean, I watched it. And it happened. wasn't great. You didn't um, miss much. I was looking up who wrote or who sang the, the theme song. Yeah, is it Frank Sinatra? Uh, so yeah, it was a uh, love and marriage was introduced by Frank Sinatra in 1955. Oh, um, it was, it was sung or something by other people. Sure, obviously. Um, is a song with lyrics by Sammy Can and music by Jimmy Van Heusen. So maybe it was just sung by Frank Sinatra. I think that that recording is for sure, Frank. <clears throat> It was for sure, Frank. I'll be Frank, honest. Yes. I got a I got a little Dean Martin vibe when I was listening to it. Yeah, I mean Rat Pack. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's good. Uh, I like the like theme song. It's an iconic song. Yeah, they got that. They got those rights, and they stayed on Hulu even. Yeah, what's the deal with like? Yeah, the the <clears throat> intro is very iconic, and like it's something that stuck with me. Mm-hmm. The uh, the shots of like the Buckingham Fountain and the song, but then. Another thing I've always wondered about is like they do this thing where like they like show a word and it's in like big blue text and then there's like green slime like yeah on it and like falling off. Maybe it's showing the degradation of marriage. Why is it like slimy? I don't know. 
I think there's a mm. trash can at some point later. Okay. When you're married, you'll know. <laughs> you know where the green <laughs> slime comes from? So what you're saying is, Jimmy, you can explain this to us. It's something I'd always thought uh, about. I don't think you can explain it. I just think if you're married, you know. I feel like <laughs> as a kid, I like associated it with like the green ooze from Ninja Turtles. Oh, but sure. I, I think as think a kid, I was going to say Nickelodeon. <laughs> I think as a kid, I thought it was seaweed. <laughs> mm. Hmm. Yep. Which that, that also doesn't make any sense <laughs> at all. The briny bottom. Marriage. The briny bottom. No. Married with seaweed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, cool. Yeah. Frank Sinatra. That that makes sense. That's a, that's a big, that's a big get. <laughs> yeah. And they kept it for Hulu, so good on them. Mm-hmm. I I was uh I heard some podcast I was listening to um weeks ago I think was talking about how like uh, music rights kind of exists and how that works a little mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. because that's not really a thing. So you say you get like a so you you can't play like a good example. You can't play like Tony Hawk, the video game from like PlayStation Two. Yeah, you can't play that. Like they can't put it on like playstation 4 or xbox one with all the same music okay mm-hmm. because they don't have any of the rights anymore. to that stuff anymore mm-hmm. and it's the same as when like uh movies were on like vhs before like dvd was made mm-hmm. and streaming it's because they had deals that were like that it was very specific like in the deals that like oh this is good for like it didn't say home distribution it said like vhs mm-hmm. videotape because that's mm-hmm. all they had yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, when I DVD see. hit and it moved, they were like, "That's not in the contract. You yeah, can't do get that." Some more money. So gotcha. they would do that. So nowadays, when they do it, uh, like streaming wasn't part of the deal, right? And mm-hmm. so, but nowadays, I think they they changed. They basically, that's not a thing anymore. Gotcha. Like, so in the contracts, it says like for future rights of all streaming and blah blah blah, you get this many cents. Yeah. So I think they just kind of worked that in. So for the most part, it doesn't really mean anything anymore. But uh-huh. all these old shows all their contracts and whatnot for the timeline of they're like, yeah, you can use the wonder years in the show. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, but they didn't say like DVD release and Hulu streaming. Yeah. And so like they just, because that wasn't in there, they didn't have like the rights to do it. Gotcha. Which is just dumb. It's just dumb. Hmm. Yeah. But it's someone going like, Oh, wait a minute. Can you pay me more money? That's why I have all these old TV shows on VHS. <laughs> and that's and that's why we watch all of our shows on first and last <laughs> on VHS. Just taped off a TV. It's weird that, yeah, we record have something. A VCR somewhere. Like we recorded, <laughs> when we watched Game of Thrones, we recorded it illegally. Onto a VHS. Onto a VHS. <laughs> and then watched, watched it, it later. the VHS. That's how For we did no it. For no reason. We had to adjust the tracking. <laughs> but really, it was just snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because winter had come. Was it snow? <laughs> or was it ash? Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to tell. So it was in Chicago, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that is that why you picked this show? Uh, yeah. I, I actually was all filmed. In I was at the way. Buckingham Fountain like a couple days ago. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's the fountain. Really flexing on his <laughs> Chicago <laughs> trip. <laughs> Remember the fountain in the beginning of the show? Yeah. No, that's I mean it. I saw the fountain, and and now I understand that that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. But I've never heard of it before this. It's just a big fountain. The water shoots up. Is it in Chicago yeah. proper? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hmm. It's like right by the lake. Huh. I got pictures. It's real. Huh. Um, I believe Photoshop. <laughs> I, I feel like Photoshop. It, they didn't make like a, I feel like they didn't make like a fake fountain on set and be like, oh, yeah, recreate it. Do they it. say what suburb they're in or what? I assume they're in just like a nondescript suburb. Yeah, no, I don't think we know anything. It I mean, seems just, south side for some just reason. Just assume that it was a. Just assume it was Chicago because they were talking about the Bulls and they showed the Buckingham and I guess they show Chicago too, don't they? Yeah. At the beginning. So it kind of felt like a southwest suburb, like a like an Aurora or something. Aurora, Illinois. Or Bowling Brook. Where uh where Wayne where Wayne Campbell of Wayne's World is from. <laughs> is that where they're at? Yeah. Yeah. I, okay, that makes more sense then. <laughs> that that's what that makes sense then. Okay, cool. Mr. Big's going to come and give them a record deal. <laughs> Man, I haven't it's seen... It's all a shared universe. I haven't seen Wayne's World in a long time. Well, you know, he's in that Deerfield? movie, right? He's like a... He like works at the diner or something? Yeah, I don't know. And he talks about how it's a murder when you mm-hmm. kill him. If, when you kill a man at war, it's serving your country. But when you kill a man in the heat of passion, <laughs> it's called murder. <laughs> <sighs> I love Wayne's World. What a great movie. <laughs> What a it great is, movie! It's great. Um, they just refer to it as Chicago, but the actual house that the exterior is shot in is in Deerfield, hmm. where that is. is. That's like a north suburb. 
So do they? Oh man, Joe doesn't know anything. <laughs> Spaghetti Joe. Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, past the bros, don't fight. <laughs> um. So they don't show much of the kids. Obviously, pretty much the only interaction with the kids are like they're just feeding off Al and like trying to get money from him. Yeah, it's pretty much all they were in. Yeah, the majority episode. of their camera time was just getting handed cash. Yeah. Um. But and then the very first shot of like. Or when Peggy and Al were, were talking and they were talking around in the morning about how he wanted juice and she didn't get it and how he wants it. I was yeah. like, this is a really good back and forth. Like I, I was like I was like, I liked that scene. It was good. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they, they describe him as being like so this is how I saw it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think most people probably saw it like this. Because they're like, Oh, this male chauvinist, whatever. He I think he kinda is, like, especially when he's at work and mm-hmm. stuff. But when he's like talking to peggy i think like he gives as good as he gets like they both kind of like just really enjoy like rimming each other and like making fun of each other and like going at it Mm -hmm. i think that's just like their big dynamic because i don't think Mm -hmm. he really gave her any worse than she gave him yeah and i was and i was watching and i was like oh they're so in love I like literally thought that while yeah. I was watching it. I was like, they're like, this is this is passion. Well, and I think the point <laughs> is that they're like, they both have flaws and they both like aren't perfect, mm-hmm. but like they work well together. Yeah, mm-hmm. they maybe not work well with others, <laughs> mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. seen with their neighbors that came in. But yeah, they they keep it real. They recognize each other's flaws, but love each other anyway. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's that was supposed to be the contrast between them and the roads, who are their neighbors. And, like, their roads are, like, so in love and say they do everything together and, like, each person's, like, a perfect partner. And the bunnies are just, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> they're, like, yeah, let's pick that apart. <laughs> let's destroy like, a marriage tonight. <laughs> We've been married for 15 years. You've been married for two months. Yeah. That was pretty funny. She's, like, when uh, Peggy and Darcy went mm-hmm. to, like, make coffee. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "That's a lot of coffee, Peggy." She's like, "Oh, don't worry. That's the guys just make. They can't. They can't like their food too much at home, or else they won't take you anywhere." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's a very like classic, not contemporary couple mindset mm-hmm. where you know they're both. Uh, she's like, "Oh, he has to take me places. I don't work," and blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's. I feel like that those kind of portions of. The entire show are antiquated. Yeah. For sure. Well, I mean, it's like Peggy's character in particular is supposed to be like a send up of like 60s sitcoms yeah. housewives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why I just read this on like the IMDb. Um, like her wardrobe is specifically set to look like she's in the 60s. I did, because, notice, I did notice that. Like yeah. Her, like her big and wig. Yeah, and and like that big belt. Mm-hmm. And like, mm-hmm. the, yeah. It's because it's supposed to like make you think of a 60s sitcom, but it's just inverted. Mm hmm. Hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I thought it felt like uh, like a Roseanne. Like, you know, the pilot of Roseanne, there's just a lot of back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of who can, who can, who gets the last laugh. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I, like I said originally, I thought it was going to be more like home improvement, which maybe there's some of that in home improvement. But I feel like it's more, that's more, um, Who's the guy from Home Improvement? Tim Allen. Tim <laughs> it's Allen? more Tim. Tim just getting ribbed. The tool man. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in yeah. In in, uh, in Home Improvement, Tim Allen just gets like, like, just made fun of constantly. Mm-hmm. He's like the butt of all jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Essentially, like at work, at home, right, with his kids, with his wife. Yeah. yeah. Roseanne maybe had <clears throat> had more back and forth. Mm-hmm. Well, Roseanne was also like a working mother and stuff right too. she worked they yeah. both and worked. he didn't they he was remember oh, no. he doesn't have a job at the beginning oh at the beginning yeah i know mm-hmm. he i know he works at some point so yeah it seemed like contract work or something mm-hmm. i mean they're making they're they're supposed to be like a just a straight middle class family mm-hmm. maybe mid middle class mm-hmm. i wouldn't say lower middle class but i mean he works sure. at he works as a shoe salesman at a shoe store but yeah. he obviously makes enough money to provide for his entire family in like Chicago. Is this yeah, his I thought that that shoe was... store? Did you guys get that vibe? He they had said there something about the line. owner of a shoe store, but I thought they were joking. But then it seemed like he was the boss there, so maybe he did own a shoe yeah, store. Yeah, he was saying like the old owner of the sh- of this oh, yeah, store, yeah, yeah. blah blah blah. Uh-huh. 
Mm -hmm. which made me think, oh. I mean, he definitely didn't act like he was scared of getting fired from someone who was in charge of him. Mm -hmm. But I don't maybe, yeah. maybe I don't know if he would have done that anyway, though. Just yeah. Based on who but he yeah, was. he's definitely a, like a high up in the shoe store if he doesn't just outright own it. But yeah, I did think about that, that it's like such an antiquated notion that like a family could be supported by one person with a job. <laughs> That's insane to me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Two kids Man. and a wife and a house and yeah. a dog. <laughs> wow. And he obviously has a car. Mm -hmm. like, they have at least one car, mm -hmm. probably. It's like, what? And you worked at a shoe store? So he, he's got to own it, right? It only makes... To yeah. me, like it only makes sense if he owns the shoe store <laughs> and somehow the shoe store does really well. Yeah. I don't know. We'll check the predicts and <laughs> listeners, you tell us. Prediction, <laughs> prediction one. Uh, he sells the shoe store for $1 million. It's not it. It's not. I don't have that. Did you get any vibes from the kids at all or was there just not enough of them to really pick anything out? Hmm. No, not really. I mean, obviously Kelly was going out potentially with somebody questionable. Yeah, yeah, she there is a a bit about her having a boyfriend named Cobra, because <laughs> yeah. he has a cobra draw on drawing on his hand, mm. and I was like, "Are you just no, not on saying his van?" I think. Oh, I thought you said hand, and I yeah, was, it was like, in the back of his van. Oh, that makes more sense because I was like, "Why aren't they just saying tattoo?" <laughs> I, I was I was confused. Yeah, and Al doesn't like that, obviously. Well, no, he's a bad guy from the GI Joes. Like, why would you? That's <laughs> that's not okay. Oh my god, he's before he's the commander. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's that. So, I mean, as far as what I got from Kelly, I was like, oh, she's just going to be like the teenage daughter that, like, makes him freak out all the time because mm -hmm. she's dating bad people and mm -hmm. possibly banging. I don't know. <laughs> Most likely. <clears throat> and then Bud was just a little shit, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a just a little annoying brother. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Was, like, this first shot, he's pulls his sister's head like hair back and then pretends to slit her throat mm -hmm. first scene <laughs> well, peggy goes don't do that to your sister you know grandma didn't like it <laughs> or something like that yeah. yeah i was like oh god so yeah good kids yeah good kids and i didn't get yeah i didn't get a whole lot i mean i feel like most of the, this this episode was definitely focused on al particular and then the secondary mm -hmm. was al and peggy's relationship mm -hmm. yeah which i feel like i got a lot of that yeah. And I understand they're back and forth. I wasn't really offended by anything he did. Yeah. Or said. <clears throat> I could see why things could be offended, but mm -hmm. I also understand what like, satire. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't particularly offensive, but it was like it does seem reactionary to like other like family sitcoms of the time of like the Cosby show or like family ties to be like, no, no, this is what a family's really like. Like it's yeah. not all just like yeah. hugs and lessons. It's like not being able to stand your family <laughs> right it was just not what was it was the same thing that was on tv by being completely different mm -hmm. it was a family sitcom but it wasn't like mm -hmm. we're gonna learn a lesson kids mm -hmm. you know it was like we're your kids i don't know <laughs> yeah like you know it wasn't i can identify with that <laughs> yeah you have no I idea where say, your kids are i have no idea <laughs> i don't even know if i have kids do i have kids where are they i cannot answer you that <clears throat> he did he did al did i mean the show in general like it kind of glorified like his his like co-worker or maybe employee guy who's just like banging ladies From left and store. right <laughs> yeah i think they made coming to get I, shoes i kind of feel like they glorified it a little bit but i think at the same time it almost made him look they try to make him look silly in a way mm-hmm like he he looked. I mean, he was always like, "Hey, hey, guy. He's like, yeah, you want to be married? Ha ha ha! I'm gonna go have sex with this girl while I sell her shoes." Yeah, yeah. But it it makes it seem like he's like, like this guy is like trying a little hard, and it's a little silly to be the guy that's like trying to pick up chicks at the shoe store. Like, come on, my man. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, it was like you can be married and you can have a wife <laughs> and some kids. <laughs> And other things like and <laughs> yeah. like he, Al couldn't say like describe. all the good things yeah <laughs> yeah and then then the guy and the lady he was sitting on both laugh at Al for being married yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Jimmy you're married <laughs> yeah that guy's gonna get his at some point the the coworker yeah I'm sure he's gonna get fired and never be in the show again <laughs> yeah. in like two episodes. <laughs> 
He That's what I mean. Right? He's going to get I'm, this. <laughs> uh, if any of you made a prediction about the shoe salesman guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, hope I did it, not. I, I hope it that was he doesn't work there anymore. So, who's that? Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a good episode. Cool. I thought it was okay. Okay. You it know, was a little... <laughs> I feel like generally when I'm like, I liked this, you're kind of like, that was fine. Yeah, it felt a little like, I don't know, slow at parts. Like, especially to start, and then it started to pick up later on <laughs> with the jokes and stuff. I but. think I just, yeah, I think I liked it from the beginning when Al and Peggy were talking in the kitchen, mm-hmm. and just they're, like, back and forth. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's good back and forth. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, Al's a good, um, he's a good fit for this part. He definitely sells, like, the, uh, like, just a guy who's just fed up. <laughs> yeah. I read that in his audition, um, like, the thing that, like, got him the job was, like, before he walked in for his scene, like when he's like standing outside the door, he like took like a deep sigh and like slumped down and then opened the door. Oh. And they're just like, yeah, this is the guy. <laughs> Wait, as he was coming in? Because, yeah, they like had him do a scene where like he was like yes, going to open the door and walk into the house. Oh, okay. In his like, audition. I was yeah. like, was there a window that no. they could see through? <laughs> that's, that's really funny. They just, they just from the other side so of the door knew. heard... <sighs> <laughs> It must have been from the outside, like he's walking in, right? They're That's from the outside, and they're looking in. Is That's the song, right? Disturbed? I think no, so. No, that guy? Is that what it is? It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> stained. Stained, yeah, stained is what is. I was looking for. No E. We oh, got discovered by Fred, Fred Durst. Durst. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we funny. hang out with people named Uncle Cracker. <laughs> Oof. Don't they? Um, predictions? Mm-hmm. Is it prediction time? Yeah. Go, Jimmy. Okay. Lay them on us. Okay. So, number one, I almost want to change this. I'm just going to say what it says. You're making them up right now, aren't I think, you? <laughs> I think, You're supposed to write them down uh, beforehand. <laughs> I think Peggy has some sort of normal hair now. I think she's a uh, much less 60s vibe. Okay. By the end of this, normal for the, normal for the normal mid-90s. for the mid nineties, which okay. isn't saying very much, but <laughs> I don't think she has a beehive. If her anymore. hair doesn't look like what I assume Elaine's hair looked like at that point, <laughs> that's pretty much what I'm going that's... off of. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. That's what I, I know about. That's probably what it is. I watched a Seinfeld today. I know what nineties hair look like. Yeah. Okay, keep going. <laughs> All right, then I think um, I think Bud is now kind of a nerd kind of disappointing his dad Hmm. i think he's he's kind of like a like a smart guy as opposed to a jock maybe Mm -hmm. that his dad would have wanted um again i'm just making this up okay then i think we see at least three hands in pants three hands in pants at least three three or more how many pairs of pants (laughs) at least two it's not part of your (laughs) Three hands. Right. <laughs> At least three hands. Counting the hands. In pants. Over under on hands. Um <sighs> I just want to say like Al says something like offensive or something. That's very Because subjective. he was I feel like you guys have been you guys are being pretty nice to Al in this. He called like a like a fat lady a balloon <laughs> yeah i said i said i thought he was it wasn't like offensive when he was with peggy because they were giving okay. as good as he got but okay. when he was at the shoe store oh I thought, you did say that i thought he okay. was offensive to any all the other women there steve he said that steve like if you don't let your kids do sports they're going to be sissy marys <laughs> <laughs> which is i've never even heard that <laughs> said before <laughs> Okay, I think Al asks for juice. I think that's the, <laughs> okay. I think that's the bookend. He wants some juice still. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Al's juicing. Okay, are those all your predicts? That's those are my predicts because I don't think we said that part, but there was like a reoccurring joke through this out this episode about juice. That about how <laughs> Al is mad that there was no juice in the house. It's known throughout the industry as the juice joke paradox. It's known the juice paradox. It yeah. is known. It's not true. Game of Thrones. Um, I said that the Bundys have new neighbors um, that are not the Rhodeses. Um, I have that uh, Bud works at the store with Al. 
Mm. Because this is 11 years later, so Bud's an adult. Mm. Um, Kelly holds political office. Oh, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's just the thing you do with like your dumb characters is you like make them politicians. Um, and that's just also what you do in real life now. <laughs> yeah, you just take a dumb TV show character and make she's, him the president. She's Ivanka in real life. <laughs> um, and then I have that the show opens with Al sitting on the couch. So that's one we'll be able to knock off pretty early in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I Low hate rate. that I feel like all those things are going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I kind of told a story with my predictions. Excellent. Come with me on this journey. No, thanks. Um, <laughs> I just left. So I, I think know. I think Al is either excited. This isn't a prediction. I'll tell you when they're predictions, but I have to tell the story as it All goes. Right. Set the scene. I think Al is finished with the shoe salesman. I think he's excited to like be done at the shoe store. Okay. So like that's the beginning. He's going to be done with it. Okay. Um, and Kelly and Bud are moving out, are moved out. So... By the end of this episode, both Kelly and Bud don't live in this house. Okay. Okay. So that's one prediction. Kelly and Bud okay. do not live in this house by the end of the episode. Um, however, oh, and Bud, uh, you said what Kelly's job was. I think Bud is a garbage man. Okay. Um, I switched that because I wrote, I buck the dog is dead, but <laughs> I didn't want, I don't, I don't, I don't want to wish death on dogs. Oh yeah. We did see the dog in this. For so I'm not going to do that. I forgot that. So number one, Bud and Kelly are moved out of the house. Bud is a garbage pan, but unfortunately Al finds out that Peggy is pregnant. Oh no. Oh shoot. Because all the kids moved out. So he's going to get everything he wants, mm-hmm. but now she's pregnant. No, and so, no. so that's that's prediction three, and then finally to run it back, Al then has to continue his job, then at the, at the shoe, shoe store because mm-hmm. he was gonna not be there anymore and like, I don't know, retire or get Retiring a get now. a job that he really wanted or something mm-hmm. like that, but he can't. He has to fall back on the shoe store for whatever reason. So one, Bud and Kelly moved out. Two, Bud is a garbage man. Three. Peggy is pregnant and for Al has to go work as a shoe salesman again or continue to do it after he's planning to move on. It's just the never ending cycle of pain. Yep. So I think it kind of just ends in the same spot. Almost mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's just like he's married with children, even more married children, with plus new one. children. <laughs> so those are my four. All right. And Buck the dog is very healthy, and no bad things happen to dogs ever. <laughs> He's getting tons of belly rubs. Oh, the belly. I almost said Buck is dead too, but then I thought back to Fraser, and they're just like they're just they're never gonna kill that dog. And he lived the whole time. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, let's watch the finale, huh? Called uh, uh, um, one more child for Peggy. <laughs> Not what it's called. Oh, yeah, it is <laughs> for sure. All right, we'll see you after that. And we're back. And right. we back. Right, boys? <laughs> and we back. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Good. We're done with this, uh, with, with, with uh, Married to Children, which uh, did not have a finale. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I read that um, Fox was unsure whether they were going to cancel it. And then later when they did decide to cancel it, like the entire cast was just like all out on vacation or whatever. <laughs> they were just like split up and like... Ed O'Neill found out by like some couple reading the newspaper and telling him. Oh, like while well, he's just like out in Mexico or whatever, just on vacation. You think that's how he'll, he'll find out about a uh, modern, modern family? family. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, according to this, so we watched um, episode twenty-four of season eleven called Chicago Shoe Exchange. Uh-huh. And according mm. to IMD, not IMDb, uh, with the Wikipedia's mm. that uh, oh, how to marry a moon was the final episode to be shot. Chicago Story Exchange was the last episode broadcasted by Fox. Mm. Um, sure. And then yeah, it says due to the decision, no official final episode of Married with Children was shown. Mm-hmm. So basically, they, I think they shot the whole season, and then they're like, "Yo, you're canceled." Yeah, and they're exactly. like, "Oh." Cool. Well, I guess we'll just show this season. Yeah. I read somewhere that they did some specials, though, after the fact. 
like TV movies. Any of that? <laughs> that like one was Christmas like a with children. Just like a <laughs> cast reunion. Specials. Uh, oh yeah. Specials. They, so it because the last episode was in '97. Yeah. And in '98 they had Bundy Mania. Nice. <laughs> January first, 1998. Bundy mania. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, they married with children. The E true Hollywood story. August. <laughs> oh. Nice. Uh, I don't know what these are. Cause this is on Fox married with children reunion. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that was an episode or something. And Just then chilling with the cast in April, 2012, they did a 25th anniversary and then also a, where are they now? So I don't know if those count as, TV in episodes. Maybe Bundy Mania might have been like a like a special that they did. It sounds like a special. How do you do a where are they now when like three of the four are like still big name actors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone except Bud. <laughs> Ooh, that's very awkward. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that hard to f- tell everybody where the other th- those three are. Yeah. And then there's Bud. He flips houses. I don't know. Have we do we ever <laughs> yeah, I don't want to figure He's out what that guy does. Killer. Uh, David Faustino. I looked up his like IMDb, and there was not much <laughs> of note. Um, I guess before we get too deep into that, do we have a write up or anything for this last episode? Oh God, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I just surprise you, asking you the same just question. Said I was gonna look up his. Okay, Gary is restocking the shoe store and donating all the old shoes to Filipino orphans. By the way, Gary is a woman mm-hmm. owner of this store. I think I remember seeing the episode where she took the store over, mm. and they were surprised. And then it was like Gary's a woman, mm, of course. Okay, moving on. When the lunch delivery girl accepts old sandals as payment because Al and Griff have no money, they realize that the shoes have trading value. Meanwhile, Kelly finally gets her masseuse license but accidentally cripples Bud when trying out her skills on him. Yeah. It was just a ragdoll Bud episode. So yeah, Kelly yeah, just destroyed Bud. They just kept trying to fix Bud and they kept hurting him. And that was pretty funny. Yeah. And I feel like there's probably a lot of that in this show. And Joe's favorite moment, I think of first and last season four happened when a monkey came out and handed Al a banana, just gave him a banana. <laughs> you clapped. <laughs> It was like a chimpanzee in a diaper. Yeah, and you, cl- you <laughs> clapped. Well, the audience was clapping, so I felt like clapping. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just, why did he give Al a banana? Like, in because he because Cliff doesn't like bananas. Who's Cliff? The other guy that was there. Griff. Griff. Damn. Griff. Whatever. Gryffindor. I don't think that's what they were going that's for. What it's short for, right? He's a wizard. Maybe. Maybe not. Um. Yeah, and they just go on like a big, like, trading spree to get a, a massage chair. Yeah, a lot of massage talk in this episode. <laughs> Swedish Ecstasy Five Thousand is what it yeah. was called. The chair. The chair. Oh man, did you look up? You were you deep dive in trivia there over there? Yeah, there's nothing interesting. <laughs> 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 I was trying to figure out more about the finale or something. There really wasn't anything. Now, uh, David Faustino uh, hosts some radio show now, but it oh. looks like it's some like it was called, something called Dash Radio, which I don't know what that is. Hmm. Is that on Sirius? It didn't say Sirius, Sirius XM. Yeah, but it did say like digital radio. It's like so it's not XM or Sirius. Man, <laughs> <laughs> that's down there. <laughs> yeah, how the slightly medium have fallen. <laughs> is, is he's also five three. Those? He's a tiny man. He's only oh, wow. yeah. He looks so Impressive. small when he yeah. was next to Jefferson Darcy, <laughs> Marcy's yeah. uh, new husband, Marcy Darcy. Who Marcy wasn't even in this episode. No, she wasn't at all. Yeah, is she gone by now. Mm-hmm. And there was a new she dog. Yeah, yeah, lucky brand new dog. And it was funny. The dog was licking a plate, and she's like, "We're done doing the dishes," as mm-hmm. if. Nice. The dog I didn't catch licking that. the plates was the dishwasher. Sterile. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Pete does all the dishes around here. Mm-hmm. Pete the cat licks all our <laughs> plates clean. Peter. That's why he's so big and fat. He's really actually <laughs> not. So yeah, I mean, not really fat at all. Pretty unique for a show 
to go 11 seasons and just sort of get canceled unceremoniously. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. They went yeah. 11 years yeah. and they didn't go like, hey, this is going to be your last one. Yeah. Just pull the plug. That's a lot of time. Yeah, it also it holds the distinction as like one of the, I think maybe the, the longest running show to never win an Emmy. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah. To never win an Emmy. Or I think it, was, like, it held that record until like Baywatch beat it. Like Baywatch was slightly longer and also never won an Emmy. That's hilarious. I don't know what uh uh I lost it now. On Wikipedia it's got like ratings for the seasons or whatever. Yeah. Like the Nielsen ratings? Maybe. It's a cuz like uh season 6 had a 13.36 yeah rating. Is that a Nielsen? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Sure. So I don't know what that's out of. I don't know high. <laughs> where do they where do they peak? That that was where they peaked. Okay. 13.36 it went up from there. Uh, season five was at a 13 even, and then it slowly went down. Um, season two was the all time low, 4.7. Uh huh. Hmm. Season one apparently unrated, yep. somehow. Hmm. Um, yeah. Season three they hadn't been invented yet. Season three shot up 10.45. Yeah. Season three was when all the controversy started, uh, when they were being boycotted by like people who thought it was like super crude and offensive. Do people realize that when they do things like boycott things or like try to tell people not to shop somewhere and do stuff like that yeah most of the time it makes other people just back watch it or buy it yeah it's the uh it's the streisand effect you ever heard of the streisand effect no is it like the butterfly effect with ashton kutcher kind of is it like stockholm syndrome yeah. uh, also <laughs> kind of <laughs> it's like none of those things barbara streisand like um didn't want people to know or like there something happened where like someone was taking pictures of like the coastline of California or something. And like her house had like shown up in one of the pictures and she was like, please take this down because I don't want people to know what or my house is or what it looks like. But like, because there's a big kerfuffle about her wanting to take the picture down, a bunch of people saw the picture and now they know where her house is and what it looks like. Right. I mean, it's like everything when like someone tweets something today and Mm -hmm. then they delete it. It's like, well, someone already took a screenshot of that, yeah, and they're just gonna post it all over Reddit. Yeah, you like, <laughs> you like lit up when I said I, that because I just thought of a funny one that, like, you know, um, forget the name of the guy, but he's the guy who plays Uncle Hank on uh, Breaking Bad. Okay, a couple years ago, he tweeted sex gifts. <laughs> Oops! Like, oh, he, like like porn gifts, like the words sex gifts. Oh, that! Oh, okay. That's awesome. <laughs> I thought you meant he was like showing a like full penetration no. gif. Like he was thought he was searching yeah, like for he was it probably and he searching tweeted searching for sex gifts and then accidentally tweeted it. <laughs> but instead of like deleting it, it like still exists and he like makes jokes about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's perfect. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's funny, oh, man. Uh, sex gifts. <laughs> so, <laughs> On Twitter, yeah. he was searching sex gifts. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, some uh, good sex gifts out we, there. We're, for the sure first last are. Twitter account's going to tweet out I'm sex sure gifts are. at some point this week. Sex JPEGs. <laughs> sex PNG. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't want that background. Just, <laughs> just want the sprites. Just those, <laughs> just those sex sprites. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what were we talking about? Strides and effect? Oh, strides oh, effect. Yeah, the show blew up in season three um, because... There was like a couple episodes that had caused controversy. Like one of them, like um, there's like a half naked lady. Like you don't actually see anything, but she's implied to be half naked. And then there's like another follow up episode where like the storyline followed um, the Bundys like going to a hotel room where they were being like videotaped having sex, and then so like like, like sue the hotel or something. Um, and that episode actually got pulled and was never aired. Mm. Um, but then it was later aired on syndication on like FX and stuff. But mm. once the controversy for that went up and like, there was like a episode that was like too raunchy for TV. Then people started watching the show. Well, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Obviously. I mean, I feel like, mm. I mean, cause even this episode had like, I don't know. It was like the 1990s version of a shake weight yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And some girl yeah. was like trying to like bend like a rod and it was, she was just wearing like a low cut yeah. shirt. She obviously had like huge boobs. Like Griff <laughs> called it like the bust builder or something. Yeah. yeah. Does it make her boobs yeah. bigger? I don't know. She's like, thank you. And he's like, no, thank you. And I was like, I bet they have that one of these in every episode. Yeah. Just, uh, he's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm in for. So him. like, 
once again, like besides that little part uh-huh. in this ep show, I was like, mm, I haven't really seen anything. Yeah, a lot of wacky little comedy. It was. Um, I looked up Fox had started in 1986, hmm. and then so this show started in 1987. So it was really like their first like big hit. It was Married with Children. I mean, yeah, wow. it, for the first 12 years of Fox being a thing. Mm-hmm. It was on. It was it on, was on. O- almost all of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. Uh-huh. It's pretty good. Striking striking gold right there. Yeah. So that's, you know, it'll always have, like, a place in TV history. It was, like, kind of jump-starting Fox. I mean, I can I can see how it – I can't really hmm. see I, – I can see how it, like, didn't win an Emmy or anything. Yeah. I mean, I, there's sure. nothing, like – deep or any like crazy good acting or mm-hmm. anything spectac- spectacular that happened it's just like a solid show that went the opposite way of regular family sitcoms so it became interesting to people yeah especially with it like it, yeah it rode the controversy train mm-hmm. it wasn't that controversial yeah really right. it was when just enough I... to make some like old religious lady mad mm-hmm. and then she screamed loud enough that America Online heard, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Is that what happened? AOL. AOL. Was AOL What's around up? in 1990? Probably not. <laughs> Is that when season three hit? No. Season three was 88 to 89. Yeah. No, Al Gore was creating the internet to... <laughs> Specifically for this reason. Specifically to fuel the outrage machine. Damn married with children. Yeah. So... What's with the goo? It's really funny, yeah. What's with <laughs> <laughs> the goo? Yeah. Seaweed, I still think. <laughs> so <laughs> this show went... This show went from uh, on syndication went on fx is fx a part like a subsidiary subsidiary of fox yeah it's fox without the o is that is that right i don't know i mean i understand that that's technically what (laughs) fx is yeah i think they're like without looking it up i think they're part of the same whatever parent company that owns like fox sports and fox news and fox broadcasting or whatever yeah I never really put that together. They're like run. They're like run pretty independently, but they're all part of whatever conglomeration sure. owns sure. all of it. I was just thinking. So this show went until eighty seven. Futurama started. 97. Ni- sorry, ninety seven. Futurama started in ninety nine, and then, which Katie Seagal was Leela. So she's just making all her money from Fox for decades. Oh, I was trying to figure out how you were connecting. Then those she two. went was in Sons of Anarchy during the same time as Futurama on FX. It's like two thousand eight or I something. I think she just signed like a thirty year contract with Fox. Yeah, or something. I think she just is, might be a slave for Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I just have some dirt on her. Katie Segal, tweet at us if you're a slave for Fox. Are you Fox's slave. I did see. Um, was was the show with the bunny? Was that called Unhappily Ever After? Yes. yes. Um, there was like a lot of the producers from Married with Children worked on that show, um, and it was like deliberately, yeah, deliberately made to be like a Married with Children knockoff. Mm-hmm. I can see that just for the new generation. Yeah, they had, had to uh, make it a little more messed up. They had joked about calling it "Divorced with, Ch- with Children." No, oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> Is he divorced in that? Hmm. Huh. Oh. I guess I don't remember a mom. Oh. I just remember a bunny. Literally, it's just like a hot teen, a hot dumb teen, and a dumb younger brother. It's literally the same. Yeah. Except instead of a dog, they got a, a bunny. <laughs> instead of a real animal that doesn't do anything, just chills, they got a bunny that he talks to. The imaginary friend. All right. I wonder if he has a... Like a neighbor instead of named jefferson he's named like uh, hefferson huh that's probably it yeah i'm witty <laughs> i come up with stuff um <laughs> yeah like from rocco's modern life <laughs> right well so it's a bummer it's a bummer i would say for i feel like fox kind of did them dirty with not letting them do a finale um i don't necessarily put it that's i'm, I'm not gonna hold the creators of this show uh, like fully li- liable for that. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, you uh, failed this podcast, Married with Children. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you should have had a finale because you made liars out of us. You made... <laughs> <laughs> you made liar. Well, not lie to our listeners. 
So this was just called first and some episode and first and the last episode. Um, yeah. Still right, but <laughs> the last still correct. Uh, Ed O'Neill had pitched a finale. Um, like, it, I mean, it would have been too late. They didn't know that they were getting canceled, but he said that if he would have like made a finale, his idea was for the Bundys to like win the lottery and then get swept up in a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I, mean, I was going to say like Roseanne. <laughs> I, I will i mean i will say this my predictions were a pretty good finale like would make for a good finale yeah yeah al, like, but that's not what happened could, like al could have won the lottery decided to quit the shoe store mm-hmm. then like something then finds out that seven thousand other people also won the lottery so like his mm-hmm. payout instead of like one million dollars was only going to be like three thousand dollars something mm-hmm. like that so that and then the kid the kids are already moved out peggy says he's pregnant she's pregnant and then he's like shit i won the lottery i quit my job now i have to get my job back and I have a kid mm-hmm. hmm. great finale you're yeah. right you're <laughs> right fox i will take your money and i'll come work for you i'm gonna make hmm. the reboot but i will not the finale but i will not sell that i will not sign that katie seagal 30-year contract <laughs> married colon with children what if, if it was if it was like colon you think it was like this part of the married universe yeah many spin-offs are there spin-offs of the show i don't think so no just unhappily ever after is kind of a <laughs> spiritual sequel spiritual successor uh, in a yeah. way cool no. well i mean all in all i enjoyed the show mm. um it just seems like to me it just seems like one of those uh my family's about to eat dinner, so if Home Improvement or this show or like The Simpsons are on, mm-hmm. is like that was the show that was on, and that's pretty sure. much where this show will stay. I think with me. Cool. Yeah, I honestly don't like if they would have had a finale, it probably just would have been a disappointment. I don't think this show <laughs> this show was written that well to where it like necessitated no. a finale. Yeah, there's no point in my mind that I'm like, oh man, you really done them dirty by not giving them an Emmy. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, believe right. That. Or like, yeah, like, oh, this finale didn't really send off Bud in the right way. <laughs> I think it. I think if it did anything, it sent off Bud in the correct possible way. <laughs> yeah, just burned him just up, just torturing him and making him look like a doof. <laughs> paralyzed him and ran him over and burned him to a crisp in a suntan yeah. machine. Yeah, they never resolved that, huh? He's still just. Like paralyzed by the end of probably episode. in a right, hospital. Right at the end, he was like, I think I'm getting feeling back. And then he like, they hurt him again. Yeah. On purpose. <laughs> I thought somehow there's going to be some sort of magic thing that like, you know, got him all his feeling back and he's fine. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought the chair was going to like fix him. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. But I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> um, all right. Predictions. That's exactly what the writer said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's move on to predictions. Huh. Um, Peg is pregnant. No. Bud and Kelly are all moved out. That doesn't seem like that happened. No. Unfortunately, no. I erased Buck the dog is dead. Yeah. And I wrote Bud is a garbage man. As far as we know, I mean, he is a garbage man, yeah. but he's not <laughs> he's a garbage man. He's a man, man of garbage, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, nope. And then Al has to work as a shoe salesman again. He's still working as a shoe still salesman. One. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to take a big old donut for that one. Um, I have the Bundys have new neighbors, which we didn't see. Uh, Bud works at the store. It doesn't look like he does. Uh, Kelly holds political office. She's got her masseuse thing going on. And the show opens with Al on the couch, but it actually opened with Al at the store. So I've got zero also. Nice. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, here, wrap, wrap this up. Tie this up with a nice little bow. Uh, Al asks for juice. There's no juice <laughs> asking. Peggy has normal hair. I wouldn't say she didn't have 60s hair anymore. She had, like, early 90s, like, Shania Twain, like, country pop star hair. Yeah, I think it was still, um... So it's still, <laughs> still outrageous. Yeah, so outrageous. she still looked, I, I did, still look. she still looked, like, old school, like, a little yeah, 60s, kinda, 70s. I don't think that was real hair. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to <laughs> ask the internet. Uh, Bud is a nerd. I don't think that's true. He's just disappointing for sure but not in the way that i thought <laughs> you're not you're not uh, they're not necessarily like a square is you know a rectangle but a rectangle's right. not a square you might be right. you can still be a nerd but it's definitely disappointing uh, not yeah not like a good way 
Um, and then I think, oh, and then we saw two hands and pants right at the end. <laughs> I want to give, I, I want to say it, it like a, like two and a half, just because one was a monkey. Still giving me zero points. A monkey doesn't count for one and a half hands. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, though. Um, I mean, it was <laughs> a chimpanzee, also. <laughs> if anything, it's less. It's less than a hand, but it's but it's cooler than one normal hand. It's like yeah, it's like one cool and a half hand. hands. Taken zero. <laughs> well, we all did great. Unpredictable. This show. Not was. only did Fox <laughs> Fox did Married with Children wrong. Married with Children did this podcast wrong. <laughs> But listeners, you can do us right by rating us five stars. Yeah, and getting our nicknames right. Getting our nicknames <laughs> right. <laughs> we got uh, we got Spaghetti Jim. We got Lava Joe. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was some guy from the show. They, yeah, they had made a reference to like some guy in prison named Lava Joe. <laughs> yeah, which is now what I'm going to call you for now on. Cool, Lava Joe. Man, that's way cooler than Spaghetti Jim. Because I'm like a hot rock. Just makes me think That's of what um, all the Spy call Kids. <laughs> was that a Spy Kids? No, that was just the same people that made Spy Kids. Lava Shark Girl Boy. and yeah. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's because you yeah, don't have nieces and nephews. No, no, I do not. <laughs> um, but yeah, rate us five stars wherever those uh, podcast app things are happening. And if you want to write into us and give Joe a compliment or tell us what shows you want us to listen to, you can hit us up on. The emails at f and l podcast f a n d l podcast at gmail dot com mm, fandle podcast and Fandle. and Twitter at <laughs> fandle podcast as well mm-hmm. and we got a Facebook and a YouTube yeah. so you can look at all the pretty thumbnails I make yeah the week. things so go there. do them go do the things for us that'd be great you're wonderful listeners yeah we think you're great we wonderful. got a MySpace. No, we don't. <laughs> Do we check the Zanga? Hands down, starts playing as soon as you click onto our MySpace. Dear Lord. Check our GeoCities. <laughs> you could do that in MySpace. You put like a song that would play. <laughs> yeah, just in the background. So you like, immediately yeah. have to hit pause. You'd have Confuse to, me. There. You'd have to log that. in every Friday night to change your song so people on the weekend know what vibes you feel. Mm. Man, that would still be a thing. <laughs> I'm sure it is in some place somewhere. But whatever yeah. alright well hey you guys you listeners you have a good week we'll see you next time on another first and last bye <laughs> just just inhaling just the sound <laughs> of a breath hold my breath for the rest of the night <laughs> <laughs>